Our scripture reading today comes from the book of Genesis, chapter 3, verse 20. And Adam called his wife's name Eve because she was the mother of all living. And Proverbs, chapter 31, verses 25 and 26 Strength and dignity are her clothing, and she laughs at the time to come. She opens her mouth with wisdom, and the teaching of kindness is on her tongue. Happy Mother's Day. As we gather together on this beautiful Mother's Day, it's a joyous occasion. It's filled with laughter, love, and I hope the warmth of cherished memories. Today, I want to delve into the timeless wisdom of Scripture as we celebrate the incredible gift of motherhood. Proverbs chapter 31, verses 25 and 26, gives a beautiful depiction of a godly woman. It says strength and dignity are her clothing, and she laughs at the time to come. She opens her mouth with wisdom, and the teaching of kindness is on her tongue. Isn't it remarkable how these words encapsulate the essence of motherhood? Mothers are the perfect model of strength and dignity facing each day with unwavering grace and courage. And oh, how they laugh in the face of uncertainty, their joy a beacon of hope in a world filled with so many challenges. Mothers are truly special. No two of them are the same. They differ in size, shape, features, and abilities. They come from a long line of mothers, beginning with the first woman, Eve. Eve was endowed with the feminine traits of being a woman, notably the ability to bear children. And so Adam named her Eve, which means mother of life. Eve was the first mother of all the later humans. And today we respect her for her role as our ancestral mother. Eve made women, birth and child rearing into inseparable aspects of being female. We marvel and wonder at the remarkable change that occurs when girls blossom into women and embrace the sacred mantle of motherhood. One day a young girl is having make-believe tea parties and playing with her dolls. And in a flash of time, she's organizing her own social events and playing with her own child. She navigates that maze of adolescence with a mixture of curiosity and uncertainty. Her laughter sounds like the tinkling of wind chimes in the breeze. She's happy and delighted to be who she is as she stands on the brink of womanhood. Her spirit is as vibrant as a field of wildflowers in bloom. Her days are carefree, filled with dreams of adventure and endless possibilities. And then something magical happens. That spirited young girl blossoms into a woman. Her essence transformed by the alchemy of time and experience. In a moment that defies comprehension, Girls take on the mantle of motherhood, stepping into the role of caregiver with grace and determination. It's a journey that's filled with laughter and tears, triumphs and trials, but through it all, she finds a sense of purpose unlike any other. With each passing day, she discovers newfound strength within herself, a reservoir of courage and resilience waiting to be unleashed. Gone for her are the days of being cared for. Now she is the caregiver, the nurturer, the rock upon which her family relies. She embraces this role with open arms, her love a beacon of hope in a world filled with uncertainty. And with each tender embrace and each whispered lullaby, she weaves a tapestry of love that binds her family together in a bond that is unbreakable. And through it all, there's hope. A radiant beacon of light that guides her through the darkest of nights. For in the eyes of her children, she sees the promise of tomorrow. A future filled with endless possibilities and infinite potential. May we never take for granted the incredible gift of motherhood. 
nor the extraordinary women who embark on this journey with grace and courage. And may we always remember that within every mother lies the spirit of a young girl, full of wonder and possibility, ready to embrace the adventure that lies ahead. And women are much more than mothers. They've traditionally filled a multitude of important roles in societies all around the world. And some of these are, of course, child rearing and family care. They've historically been the primary caregivers for children within the family unit. They've been responsible for nurturing, feeding, educating, and raising them. Women have managed the household. They've been taken on the task of cooking, cleaning, managing finances, and maintaining the family's living environment. And women often provide care and support, not only to their own families, but also to the community at large. And this can include caring for elderly relatives, assisting neighbors in times of need, and volunteering in various community organizations. They're part of our education and moral teaching. Women have played crucial roles in educating and shaping moral and ethical development of children and community. They have served as mentors and teachers and moral guides within their families and the communities. Women have traditionally also been at the forefront of health care and nursing. They provide care and healing to the sick and injured. And this includes roles as doctors and midwives, nurses and caregivers in hospitals, clinics, and homes. And women have preserved our culture and tradition. They've passed them down through generations. They play vital roles in preserving language and art crafts, and other cultural heritage. Women often provide emotional and social support to their families, friends, and communities. They offer comfort, empathy, and a listening ear during times of joy, sorrow, and crisis. And don't forget that women have also served as spiritual leaders. They've served as leaders for various religious groups and traditions, providing counsel and leading and nurturing their faith community. For good or bad, in whatever role they have filled, mothers have had an incredible impact on our lives. They're like superheroes in disguise as everyday people. They have a remarkable ability to juggle a million things at once, all while maintaining a smile on their faces and a warm plate of cookies in the oven. No sermon about mothers would be complete without mentioning the boundless love they so freely give. First John 4.19, we're reminded that we love because he first loved us. And this verse is speaking to the foundational love that mothers embody, a love that reflects the very heart of God himself. It's a love that knows no bounds, no conditions, and no limits. It's a love that sacrifices, nurtures, and sustains, even in the face of adversity. And let us not forget the hope that mothers also inspire within us. Jeremiah 29, 11 says, For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans for welfare, for good, and not for evil, to give you a future and a hope. Mothers are living testaments to this hope because mothers embody a hope that their children will do well in life. No matter what the children's mistakes or failures, mothers are on the sidelines cheering their children on to renewed efforts and hopefully eventual success. As we honor our mothers today, let us celebrate the roles they play in our lives and also acknowledge the depth of their love, the magnitude of their sacrifices, and the beauty of their grace. Let's cherish the memories we've shared, the laughter we've enjoyed, and the hope that sustains us. And above all, let us give thanks to God for the precious gift of motherhood. May the Lord bless each and every mother today and always. Happy Mother's Day.
now let's pray. Dear Lord, thank you for the wonderful things you've given to us. Among those gifts is one we highly honor and love, mothers. Thank you for the brave women who have risked their own lives to give us life. Thank you for their nurture, comfort, and teaching. And we ask you today to bless all women, especially those who have taken on the role of motherhood, whether by giving birth, adoption, providing foster care, or mentoring the children in their lives. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. I'm going to leave you with these points to ponder. How did your mother impact your life by her good examples and teaching? Would you change anything about your own mother? If so, what would it be? And here's another special gift just for Mother's Day. Irma Bombeck's And God Created Mothers. When the good Lord was creating mothers, he was into his sixth day of overtime. When the angel appeared and said, you're doing a lot of fiddling around on this one. And God said, have you read the specs on this order? She has to be completely washable, but not plastic. Have 180 movable parts, all replaceable, run on black coffee and leftovers and have a lap that disappears when she stands up, a kiss that can cure anything from a broken leg to a disappointed love affair, and six pairs of hands. The angel shook her head slowly and said, six pairs of hands? No way. It's not the hands that are causing me problems, God remarked. It's the three pairs of eyes that mothers have to have. That's on the standard model, asked the angel. God nodded. Yes, one pair that sees through closed doors when she asks, what are you kids doing in there, when she already knows. Another here in the back of her head that sees what she shouldn't, but what she has to know. And of course, the ones here in front that can look at a child when he goofs up and say, I understand and I love you, without so much as uttering a word. God, said the angel, touching his sleeve gently, get some rest tomorrow. I can't, said God. I'm so close to creating something so close to myself. Already I have one who heals herself when she's sick, can feed a family of six on one pound of hamburger, and can get a nine-year-old to stand under a shower. The angel circled the model of a mother very slowly. It's too soft, she sighed. But tough, said God excitedly. You can imagine what this mother can do or endure. Can it think? Not only can it think, but it can reason and compromise, said the creator. Finally, the angel bent over and ran her finger across the cheek. There's a leak, she pronounced. I told you that you were trying to put too much into this model. It's not a leak, said the Lord. It's a tear. What's it for? It's for joy, sadness, disappointment pain, loneliness, and pride. You are a genius, said the angel. Somberly, God said, I didn't put it there. 